on this function, we have um, x going to 0 from above. Now the natural log, if you remember the graph of the natural log, um, looks like this. It's the inverse of e to the x. So as x tends to 0 from above, the natural log of x goes down to negative infinity. So basically, we have this uh, a product of two things. Um, this x is going to 0, and the natural log of x is going to negative infinity. So if you square it, that's going to go to positive infinity. So we have um, part of this product is getting smaller and smaller. The other part's getting larger and larger. And we want to know what's going to happen. So you can see this as an indeterminate form because it sort of depends on how quickly does the part that's shrinking shrink to 0 and how, how quickly does the part that's uh, growing grow. So if, uh, if we get to 0 faster than, if we're going to 0 faster than we're growing, then we could get 0. If, we get to, if we're growing faster than we can get to 0, then we could get infinity or some number in between. So again, this is an indeterminate form. Unfortunately, L'Hopital's doesn't apply um, in this case, but we could cook it up so that it did. When we get 0 times infinity, a good plan is to um, move something downstairs. Probably it would be easiest to move this x downstairs. Here's what I'm going to do. The natural log of x squared, I'm going to write that as over 1 over x. I still have the same thing because if I were to multiply top and bottom by x, I'd get an x upstairs and the 1 over x times x would go away. So these two expressions are exactly the same. I've just rewritten it. And the reason I've done that is because now we have ln x um, as x tends to 0 from above. That goes to negative infinity. Take really large negative numbers and square them and they'll be really big positive numbers. So we have infinity in the top. And 1 divided by tinier and tinier positive numbers also goes to positive infinity. That's a form that L'Hopital's applies to. So let's use L'Hopital's. We take the derivative of the top. The 2 comes down. We get the natural log of x. And then we get the derivative of what's inside, which is 1 over x. Down here, we have x to the negative 1. So we get negative x to the negative 2. OK. And let me multiply top and bottom by, um, I'm tempted to do x squared here to simplify this. But uh, then I get you know, the limit as uh, we have a 2, and we have this x and the x squared. We have 2x, ln x, all over these x squareds make a negative 1. But, uh, kind of did maybe a little bit too much because now I've got 0 times infinity again as uh, my limit. So well, let me um, take this x downstairs and write it as a 1 over x. So I have the limit as x tends to 0 from above of, let's see, I've got 2 divided by negative 1. Let me call that negative 2, ln x, and then over 1 over x. Take a second and make sure that you see that these two things are exactly the same. So if you multiply top and bottom by x here, you'd be back to there. So these are the same. This has the benefit of being, oh, did I write? I, have, I don't know what I wrote there. 0 times infinity, not times 8. OK, this has the benefit of being, see, we have negative 2 times negative infinity. So that's going to infinity. And this is going to infinity. So we have infinity over infinity again. So we can now apply L'Hopital's again. And the limit as x tends to 0 from above. And we have negative 2 times 1 over x. That's negative 2 over x. And the derivative here, the derivative of 1 over x is negative 1 over x squared. Let's just simplify that just a little bit by multiplying top and bottom by x squared. And we have the limit as x tends to 0. Let's see, these negatives cancel. If I multiply the top by x squared, I get a 2x. If I multiply the bottom by x squared, I get 1. So I have the limit as x tends to 0 from above of 2x, which is 0 now. So I finally see that this limit is 0 after a little bit of rearranging. That means that the x got to 0 faster than the ln x squared could, could go to infinity.